Well, hello, Arise family. What a joy it is to be able to present the leadership strand of Arise 2021. We may have uh, missed Arise 2020 due to COVID, but uh, our Arise leadership team have been madly emailing and Zooming with each other to uh, ensure that we now have Pray Arise, which many of you have participated in, and also that we are launching the first of four Arise Boutique Conferences for 2021. So welcome, what a great opportunity we have. You see, good leaders never sit on their hands during a crisis. Uh, they find another way <laughs> to carry the vision that God has given them. And we believe that God will accomplish in our hearts what he has held in trust since last year for us. Um, I have a theory about women and their large handbags. Uh, this is mine. My family actually joke all the time that if I was uh, lost in the middle of a foreign city that I actually could survive for quite a few days on what is in my handbag. Let me take you on a mystery tour of my handbag. So, of course, there is the bottle of water, uh, hand sanitizer at the moment, and a face mask just in case. Uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, hand cream, a little compact mirror, a biro, nail file, some anointing oil, because I just never know when I'm going to need to pray for somebody, um, lipstick and a uh, few um, Panadol. No one wants to be without Panadol, of course, sunglasses and a comb and, of course, a tape measure, because you never know when I might just see something that I might need and I need to know exactly what its size is. Yes, and there's even more in there. I suspect that it's actually a carryover of having had five babies in 10 years and carrying a very large, uh, heavy nappy bag around with me all the time. You see, I always had to have spare sets of baby clothes and nappies and bunny rugs and baby toys and baby wipes and nappy rash and baby food and I would even have an extra set of clothes for me because you just didn't know when you were going to be vomited on or pooed on. Being a mother was a little bit like being a girl guide. You always had to be prepared. When my last baby was finally out of nappies, now that was 24 years ago, and I no longer needed a nappy bag, I actually felt quite lost without carrying this large heavy bag with me wherever I went. Um, and I always felt like, oh, I had forgotten something. Wave and smile if you can identify with me. Thank you, girls. You see, I love women and I love leaders and we are incredibly resilient, resourceful and creative creatures. And we can produce a meal out of an empty pantry. We can take, uh, stretch our money at the grocery store and produce a feast. We can reach into our wardrobes and we can pull out a 10-year-old dress and we can throw on a bit of jewellery, throw on a scarf and shine like a diamond. We like to be prepared for all contingencies, and I actually believe that it is wired into our DNA, um, that God has seeded these qualities into us, and he develops them through our family responsibilities and leadership opportunities that we have at church or at work or in our communities. This Arise leadership is called Well-Oiled Leaders. What keeps the light burning brightly within us, no matter what the delays, no matter what the roadblocks to our destiny, no matter what the disasters we face or the discouragement that comes our way. Are we well-oiled leaders? Well, today is an opportunity to oil up. There are four repeating images in the Bible, uh, bread, wine, water and oil. And today we're going to start by understanding the significance of oil, of olive trees and of oil for our lives. Now, King David actually described himself as an olive tree in Psalm 52 verse 8. I am an olive tree thriving in the house of God and I will always trust in God's unfailing love. And then God describes his own people, Israel, as an olive tree in Psalm 52, sorry, Jeremiah 11, verse 16. He says, I, the Lord, once called them a thriving olive tree, beautiful to see and full of good fruit. And then Paul describes Jesus as God's olive tree, which the Gentile... Um, believers were grafted into. 
Romans 11:17. So now you receive the blessings that God promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. And that was Jesus. Last year in Turkey, I saw groves and groves of olive trees, kilometer after kilometer. In fact, Turkey is the world's fourth largest producer of olives. In fact, the top 10 olive producing nations form a ring around the Mediterranean. And olives are literally served there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, whereas we Aussies tend to keep olives for our cheese platters. Let me just segue for a moment to describe the characteristics of olive trees and their health benefits because it always adds depth uh, to our understanding of why olive trees and their oil are used as a key image in scripture and what's their significance to us as being well-oiled leaders today. So the first characteristic is longevity. Olive trees live for thousands of years. In the Mediterranean region, there are trees that are over 2,000 years old. Uh, in Gethsemane, on the Mount of Olives, there are olive trees that are thousands of years old. Uh, the word Gethsemane actually means uh, olive press. Olive trees are indestructible. An olive tree's root system is actually so robust that if the entire top structure is destroyed by frost or fire, uh, it will regenerate itself simply by cutting away the dead wood and then the next spring uh, it will begin to shoot again. Olive trees are unparchable. Let me say that word again, unparchable. They're drought friendly, uh, like my native Australian eucalyptus tree or gum tree, uh, they don't need to be watered. Uh, they grow in any type of soil and olive tree shallow roots actually wrap themselves around the rocks uh, where they grow. Olive trees are generous. They start bearing fruit at five years and they continue to bear fruit for thousands of years. Um, large olive trees will produce 200 kilos of fruit in a year, which is equivalent to 25 liters of oil in a year. And the older the tree gets, the more fruitful it becomes, which is really good news for mature girls like myself. Olive trees are considered sacred. It's, uh, the olive oil was used to anoint God's priests and anoint the kings, and it was a symbol of the Holy Spirit on the anointed one. And olive trees are so healthy. Uh, o the oil itself and the olives are healthy. They've got antioxidants. Uh, they have healthy fats and healthy fiber. There's a reason why that Mediterranean diet is called the healthiest diet in the world by the World Health Organization. So everyone say, eat more olives. <laughs> very good. Why? Well, because olives are very low in calories to start with. One olive is just seven calories and it actually takes, you burn up more calories digesting that one olive than you gain from eating it. Um, secondly, olives contain good fat. They're not fattening, they contain good fat. They increase good cholesterol, which actually decreases blood cholesterol and lowers the risk of heart disease. Olives actually improve our memory as well. They contain a natural chemical that reduces the stress in the brain and actually improves our memories. Turn to the lady beside you and say, eat more olives. <laughs> olives also aid in beauty. Uh, they contain oleic acid, which keeps our skin soft and supple and healthy. Olives also aid in diet control or appetite control. Eating a few olives actually takes the edge off your appetite and the monounsaturated fatty acids slow down digestion and they send messages to the brain, um, giving a message of fullness and satisfaction. Ol uh, olives reduce pain. They contain anti-inflammatory agents that act as a natural pain medication. They're an anti-cancer food, they're rich in uh, antioxidant and they provide natural protection against cancer. And finally, uh, they're a rich source of vitamin E, uh, which makes cellular processes safer and they lower the risk of colon cancer. They're high in fiber, they've got high levels of microbiome and probiotics, which means they make your gut healthy. So, everyone say, eat more olives. No, I'm not working for an olive company. <laughs> But it's not random. 
that olive, tr olive trees and their oil are used to symbolize God's people and the Holy Spirit. You see, because even in the natural, olive trees and their oil are symbols of strength and resilience and longevity and fruitfulness and health. Why of all the trees that God could use in the Bible to describe his people, does he use the olive tree? It's fruit and it's oil that nourished people on a daily basis and provided light in their homes. So what's the secret of resiliency, of strength, of longevity and fruitfulness and health for leaders in today's culture and in the contemporary church leadership? Well, I believe that we need to be well oiled on a continuous basis. We understand the importance of good oil in our cars and in machinery, and we understand the importance of good fats in our diet, but we can easily neglect the oil of the Spirit who lights up our lives and keeps us mobilized and effective and fruitful in God's kingdom. It's because we've been effective and fruitful that we actually use up the reserves and that we need to be replenished. It's because we don't know what challenges are actually lying ahead of us that we need to be prepared and operating out of a reserve of oil and not just enough oil. There were five uses for olive oil in biblical days. It was an essential source of food and nourishment. It was fuel for the lamps to give light. It was a balm for healing wounds and as medicine, it was used to anoint kings and priests, setting them apart for authority and service. And it was used to cleanse and moisturize and purify. It was used to make soap and perfumes and skincare. Olive oil was essential for daily life in biblical times, just as the oil of the Spirit is key to all aspects of our lives as leaders. We're going to read now from Matthew 25, verses 1 to 10. And Jesus tells the parable of the ten bridesmaids or the ten virgins. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil everyone say extra oil when the bridegroom was delayed they all became drowsy and fell asleep at midnight they were raised with a shout look the bridegroom's coming come out and meet him all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps and then the five foolish ones asked the others please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out but the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came and then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Bridesmaids serve the bride. They make her wedding ready for her groom. And our mission is to prepare the bride the church for Jesus' return. The only difference between the wise bridesmaids and the unwise bridesmaids was the amount of oil that they carried. You see, the unwise took only just enough for what they thought they would need. All 10 had the same lamps. The only difference was the quantity of oil. Wise bridesmaids carry extra oil. Everyone say extra oil. Well-oiled leaders will have extra oil on hand. You see, well-oiled leaders don't pour out the last drop of oil on the unwise they, who don't carry the extra oil. And that's really a word, I think, for some of the leaders uh, watching here today. Olive oil is a source of energy and power and light and warmth, lubrication, nutrition. And oil represents the Holy Spirit in us. Taking extra oil on our life journey means that we will have oil in reserve. We will have Holy Spirit in reserve. We'll have the energy. We'll have the wisdom. We'll have the longevity. We'll have the resilience. We'll be the light of the world. We'll be prepared for the unexpected. We'll be prepared for delays, for disappointments and for discouragements. And we will be ready for our divine destiny. We won't run ourselves dry by preparing the bride. We'll serve out of the overflow of the spirit in us, not out of emptiness. 
So why carry extra oil? Let's talk about delays. They were tired of waiting for the groom and so all the bridesmaids fell asleep. You see, we don't know how long it's going to take to make the bride ready for Jesus' return. And generally, everything takes longer than what we think it will. It takes longer for the money to come in. It takes longer to fall pregnant. It takes longer to lose weight. It takes longer for our children to grow and mature. It takes longer for the prodigals to come home. It takes longer to reach our goals. It's taking longer for the coronavirus to end. It takes longer for healing to come. And it can take longer to reach our calling than we expect. You see, it took David longer to become the king of Israel than he expected. How many dreams have been snuffed out because of delays? Not enough oil. And then there's our divine destiny. Those with a just enough mindset focus on today's needs, not tomorrow's opportunities and challenges. And when they were coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus found that his disciples were unable to set a possessed boy free. You see, delivering this boy took more oil than the disciples had. You see, Jesus didn't only just pray and fast in the moment. Prayer and fasting was his lifestyle. And we are actually called to live out of the overflow. Even when we're full, ask for more. We don't know what lies ahead. And Jesus is looking for those who are going to carry the extra oil. When David the shepherd boy saw Goliath, he saw victory for the armies of the living God. His brothers ran away in fright. You see, disaster sometimes hits us. Just before COVID hit, three members of our church were called in as first response counsellors for some terrible family tragedies that happened, uh, that reached the news all over the nation of Australia. You see, they had no idea what was ahead of them. They just had to turn up and turn on the oil. They had to be ready or not. As Christian women with families and leading in our workplaces, our church, our communities, we are often exposed to more than the average person. We require extra oil because we don't know what disasters lie ahead. Don't be caught short of extra oil. There are times of discouragement. When Elijah defeats 400 priests of Baal, he cowers in a cave. He is cloaked with disappointment and discouragement. You see, extra oil for Elijah looked like sleep and food from God's hand. Now, extra oil for you may not look like just another church service, but it will look like resting close enough to Jesus to receive from him exactly what you need. Hear his heartbeat until the discouragement and the depression and the disappointment or the heaviness lifts. But until we desire extra oil, just because of who Jesus is, we will settle for less. You see, carrying out our usual spiritual disciplines will supply us with just enough oil. But when we demonstrate a desire for Jesus, that's when we move into extra oil territory. You see, desire is far more powerful than discipline. Satan works to kill our hunger and to kill our thirst with delays and discouragements and disappointments. But Matthew 5 verse 3 tells us, promises us, God blesses those who are poor in spirit and realize their need of him, right? Realize their desire for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. You know what? We're going to have as much of God today as we were hungry for yesterday. We don't know what God will entrust us with tomorrow and we cannot content ourselves with just what worked yesterday or in the past. Are we hungry for the new thing? Are we asking for more? I shared at a previous Arise about three vows that I take most mornings, a vow of surrender, a vow of generosity and a vow of mission. For me, it's like turning on the oil tap for extra oil which surely I have needed in leading through this COVID, past COVID year. And I continue to need to lead in the areas that I'm called to. 
Before leaving last year for Ukraine and Turkey, um, we were very aware that this was going to be an intense time of ministry and I knew that I would need extra oil. I was praying and fasting, taking communion every day. I was preparing and positioning myself under the extra oil tap. What does extra oil look like for you? If we took a dipstick <laughs> and we put it under your hood and we measured your oil levels, what would it look like? You see, there's always more of God's presence as we gather and as we praise him. The Arise Boutique Conference here today is another opportunity for extra oil for you. And you know what? It's not selfish. It is not selfish to keep extra oil on hand. It is not selfish for us to have, ensure that we've got the light and we've got the strength and we've got the health and we've got the power. It enables us to be effective and fruitful when faced with our daily responsibilities and faced with the unexpected delays and faced with disasters and discouragement and the divine destiny that God has got in store for each one of us. Because my Nana lived back in World War II, she always had more than enough in her pantry. There were extra cans and extra packets of food ready for any situation. She had not only a supply for herself and for her family, she had enough for her neighbours and she had enough for unexpected visitors. What is in our spiritual pantry? What have we stocked up on? Are we ready educationally, logistically, physically, emotionally, financially and spiritually for any crisis? Were we ready for COVID? And how are we coming out the other end of COVID? Joseph saw a seven-year famine following seven years of plenty in Pharaoh's dream. And so he organised for Egypt to store up extra during the years of plenty so that there would be enough in the years of famine. He not only saved his own nation of Israel, but saved all of Egypt and surrounding nations as well. We personally, our families, our communities, our churches, our nation need fresh oil. Just as the people of ancient Israel consumed olive oil every day, we need the fresh oil of the Spirit every day. The olive tree's fruitfulness, longevity, ability to thrive in difficult situations is not accidental. And the link between olive trees and God's appointed leaders and priests is really clear when Zechariah describes, is given this vision in Zechariah 4, verse 2 to 7. He says, I see a gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on top of it, and around the bowl are seven lamps. I see two olive trees, one on each side of the bowl. And then I asked the angel, what do they mean? He said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it. You see, Zerubbabel, the governor, and Joshua the high priest were the two olive trees in Zechariah's vision and they were working together and they were rich sources of God's oil for the seven lamps in the temple that had to burn 24-7, demonstrating that God's light, God's spirit never goes out. His is a source of power that never runs out and our light, the spirit in us, never ever has to run out. You see, God is encouraging both governmental and spiritual leaders not to trust in military uh, or material resources, but to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish what he has called them to in their nation. What has God called you to accomplish in your nation? It's the Spirit of God who breaks every bondage, levels mountains, raises up valleys and defeats every plot the enemy has against your life and ministry. It's not by force or by strength, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Amen, amen. 
longevity, indestructibility, unparchable, generous, sacred, fruitful, health-giving are the qualities of olive trees. These are the same qualities that we need to be fruitful in our lives and in our ministries. We desire to be well-oiled leaders who carry extra oil because we don't know what lies ahead of us. We want to be re wedding ready. We want to be prepared for delays, for discouragement, for disasters. We want to be prepared for the divine destiny that God has for us. But above all, we want to desire intimacy with God, not just a discipline that settles for enough oil, but moving into the extra oil territory through just desiring to be with him. Carrying extra oil is not selfish. It is sensible and it is essential for leaders who pour out their lives daily into the lives of others. Whatever is your way of getting extra oil, enjoying close relationship with Jesus, make it a priority in your life. We have a chair hanging on a she oak tree uh, where we go on holidays on the beach and I like to sit there in the early morning with a cup of tea and watch the sunrise and have my journal and my Bible with me as I start each new year. You see it's one of those places where I plug into God and I receive extra oil for all that lies ahead of me. What are your places to get extra oil? What are your times to get extra oil? Take time, plug in, recharge. When kings or priests were anointed, it wasn't just a small dab of oil. It was actually five liters of oil. That's one liter. Imagine five liters of oil poured over the head, dripping down the hair down the collar, down the clothes, down over the feet, every part completely covered with oil. See, God was not stingy with the anointing oil. It wasn't just enough oil. It was more than enough oil till it pooled around their feet. This is the picture that we should have in mind when we think about being anointed. <laughs> it's a more than enough picture. It's an extra oil kind of picture. And if you need to maybe run to the kitchen right now and find yourself some oil, take a moment, go and do that because I'm inviting you right now to anoint yourselves with oil, something that we need to do regularly, uh, as often as we need it. It's a symbol of the continual flow of the Holy Spirit that's available to all of us who hunger and who thirst for him. So if you have some oil, take a dab and you anoint yourself. Let's pray. Dearest Jesus, thank you. Thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit on us. Forgive us for when we've settled for just enough, Lord. Jesus, we declare today that we will be well-oiled leaders and we will be ready for all that lies ahead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are more than enough to meet every need, every delay, every disaster, every discouragement, and to meet the divine destiny that you have appointed for us. Holy Spirit, we don't just need you. We desire you and we love you and we long for you. Amen. Well, I believe and trust that you have received from the Lord. And if you didn't take that opportunity just then, you're able to at any time in your quiet times with the Lord, go get some oil, get the symbol of the Holy Spirit and just open up your heart and receive from him. You need it for your daily life, but you need it in your role as leaders in his kingdom and in his church and I pray that you will be blessed through this word and you will be activated through it. And you will be women of the extra oil. Amen. God bless you.